Stan, I've got the ultimate upgrade. A turbocharger. More boost, more speed, I'll be unstoppable. Oh great, another episode of Roger vs. the Laws of Physics. Dude, cars have turbos, so why not bikes? More air plus more fuel equals more power, right? In theory, yeah. In reality, that tiny motorcycle engine wasn't built for forced induction. Most bikes are high revving, high compression, and adding a turbo. That's just asking for detonation. But I've seen turbo Hayabusas. Those things are insane. Yeah, because the Hayabusa has a massive 1,340 cubic centimeter inline four. And when people turbo it, they lower the compression ratio, reinforce the internals, and extend the swing arm so it doesn't flip every time they twist the throttle. So what happens if I just slap a turbo on my stock bike? Best case, uncontrollable turbo lag followed by a violent power spike. Worst case, your pistons turn into molten shrapnel and your engine files for divorce. Okay, but wouldn't I get ridiculous top-end speed? Sure, but at what cost? The heat buildup, fuel tuning, and stress on the engine would be insane. And let's not forget, most bikes are chain-driven, not shaft-driven like turbo cars, so that torque spike is directly trying to flip you over. All right. So turbocharging a bike is possible, but only if I basically rebuild the entire engine and modify the frame? Now you're getting it. If you're not riding a stretched, reinforced Hayabusa with a built motor, you're better off just getting a bigger, naturally aspirated bike. But turbo noises, though. Roger, no! 